Let's talk about the main event. Let's talk about Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. Going into this fight, the story was this. Conor's going to crush him. This is going to be either one-round TK, two-round two KO or TKO. 70, 80% of the people thought Conor was going to win, and man, rightfully so. He looked amazing at the weigh He looks fit. He looks ripped. He looks more focused than ever. He looks more motivated than ever. You know, myself as a McGregor fan, I was happy for him. You know, I was rooting for him to win. But, but to anyone who asked me what my prediction was for the fight, I swear to God, I said, hey, man, for this one, I think it's going to be a knockout in the first round. I think Dustin Poirier is going to knock out Conor McGregor. And people looked at me and said, really? I said, I feel like when you sleep on someone, when you count him out, when, when you just disregard him, because people know uh, Dustin's a good fighter, but man, when you just kind of go, it's Conor McGregor's return and Dustin Poirier, you know? The Conor McGregor match and Dustin Poirier. I, I literally went to Google, right, like before the fight, and I said, when do the fights start? And the first headline was, when is Conor McGregor's fight, question mark. My sister doesn't watch MMA, doesn't watch UFC. Says, hey, that McGregor guy's fighting tonight, right? Like, it's unbelievable. Like, it's unbelievable, right? And, you know, it's to be expected. He's the biggest star. Anyways, you go into this, and I was thinking, you know what, man? I was thinking Dustin really has a chance here. So the fight starts. Man, both of them look good. Both of them look clean. They're both pushing forward. McGregor looks phenomenal as ever. I would argue, and also GSP's coach Faraz Zahavi would argue, Conor McGregor is the best counterpuncher on the planet right now. With that being said, he initiated a lot of the shots. He pushed forward, he was very aggressive. It was like he was really trying to meet that kind of 60 second mark that he put for himself. For the people that don't know, he said that it'll be dusted in 60 seconds. So he's coming forward, they're both throwing, you know, McGregor very good feints, very good head movement. He's looking good, he's looking slick. You know, he's, um, he's but he's completely head hunting. I don't believe Connor went to the stomach once. I believe it was all to the head. And, and he was hitting Poirier with some shots, man. Some one, two, some left hand, some straights that, uh, you know, Poirier really took on the chin and it didn't rock him. So immediately that's kind of your first takeaway from round one. He's moving around well, threw in a couple of high kicks. McGregor did really well. When Poirier could, he could find the shots, right? So what he would do is, which was amazing on Poirier's part, knowing that Connor's a counter striker, the last thing you want to do is swing haymakers, swing and hope. He was smart, he was calculated, he took shots that you could argue he might not have had to, but he, he didn't force his shots. And what I mean by that is he looked for the right timing, and when he threw, sometimes in those exchanges, even though he got hit, he also hit McGregor. And Dustin Poirier has got some power in his hands. This young man's got dynamite. And even though I'm a McGregor fan, the underdog in me who loves rooting for the guy who always finishes second or third and is so close to number one, but then Connor shows up. And so close to number one, and then Khabib shows up. You can't help but root for the kid, you know? Anyways, here's the thing. Round one, it ends. The moment it ends, you look at McGregor and he takes a big breath, <sighs> right? And as he's walking over to his corner, this was interesting. Now, usually when you take that one minute timeout between rounds, they'll pull out the stool, right? They put out the stool, Dustin sits down, he's drinking his water. They put out the stool, but Connor's like, no, 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 I'll stand. I thought that was very interesting, the psychology of it, because going into this fight, people were talking about, oh, McGregor's got cardio issues, and you know, McGregor won't last, and I, I think whether he was tired or not is still debatable, but it, it was definitely like a, like a little nudge to the crowd, a little nudge to Poirier. Again, back to the psychology, I'm not, t I'm standing. You're sitting down in between rounds, I'm, I'm good to go. And I thought that was very interesting. The story of this fight, 100%, the kicks. The calf kicks. My friends, if you've ever been kicked in the leg, it's it's such a it's such a weird experience. It is such a weird experience. First of all, your leg goes numb. Your leg goes numb, everything tenses up, and it's like the mobility that you have to be light and to bounce around and move forward. Everything is immobilized. You feel so much slower. You taking a step hurts. Now check this out. When you want to throw a punch, right? Just play with me here. You're right, whatever stance you are, as you're throwing a punch, generally, what do you see, right? You see the shoulder, you see the shoulder move, you see torque in the hip. My friends, but a huge part of it that, that the ordinary person doesn't see is your feet. You plant your feet to get a good base on the ground, right? So you're grounded. So when you throw that punch in MMA, they say you sit on your punch. It's not a light jab, but you're fully into it. When your leg is compromised from severe leg kicks, and I know Dustin hit Connor with at least 11 calf kicks. Brutal, and for people who don't know, calf kicks are just right under the, the knee, so go to the knee on the other side, just below that, so the other side of the shin. And man, and, and this, was, this was the interesting thing too, right? Like, he just starts tearing up that leg, and in the second round, Connor doesn't throw any more kicks. 
He doesn't move any more elusively, but he's smart. So one thing that Connor did to his advantage or to his disadvantage was he didn't switch stances. Commonly what you see is if I have my right leg forward and if you're kicking the smokes out of my leg and guys, if you've ever been kicked, you know, after two or three times, it, it hurts. It hurts like Jesus. And then if you want to start blocking his kicks, you got to bring up your leg to check it. That hurts too. And you're like, dear God, what the hell? So anyway, sometimes what fighters do is they'll switch stances. So if you're kicking my right leg, I'll put it behind me and I'll put the left leg out. This way you can't kick the right leg and at least my left leg is healthy and you can take that one. Now, for whatever reason, Connor didn't. Maybe he had a game plan going with that stance. Maybe he didn't want Dustin to know that it's working. Because if you switch the stance, it's kind of a telltale sign that, oh, I'm destroying this kid's leg. Anyways, man, they have back and forth exchanges. McGregor still looks quick and he's fainting. It's so cool to watch. But man, Poirier was taking shots. He was really tough and he would throw him back. And in those exchanges, you know, he'd land every once in a while. And it was like the power. You go like, whoa. Like Dustin's really got some dynamite in his hands. And eventually there was this part where uh, Dustin starts to connect and he pushes McGregor back to the octagon. And McGregor with his back to the octagon, this is something very interesting that uh, Dan Hardy pointed out. If you stand with one leg forward and one leg back, right, what are you doing? Generally they would say that the, the hand that's further away from your opponent is your power hand. Why is that? It's because that's the one that you have your hip on. If you're listening to this, if you can stand up right now, put your left leg forward, right hand back. If you throw a shot with your left hand, that's one thing. But if you throw it with your right side, well, you got your shoulder, you got your hip, you know, you got all that momentum, right? One interesting thing that Dustin does is when he gets his opponents to the cage, and he's done this with multiple people, I know he did this with, I believe he did this with Dan Hooker. No, he did, he 100% did. He did this with Max Holloway when he won the title. What he does is instead of being one leg forward, one leg back, he actually stands in a square stance. So he's completely facing you. So it's not like Southpaw Orthodox, it's square. Like both legs are, are just right, uh, they're like parallel from each other, they're right in the middle. And obviously the negative of that is, well, you have your whole body exposed to getting hit. The positive of that is now you have equal power in both of your hands, right? So what happens is if you have one leg forward and one leg back, it's like, well, the jab hand, right? That you can't, you can't um, create that kind of momentum and power in, in your front, uh, in your front hand, right? The hand that, that's in front that you jab with for a hook, like you can with your rear hand. But the moment you start standing square and both of your legs are together, now you've got equal power in both hands, and you saw this perfectly. So he gets McGregor into the octagon, he starts standing square, and he just starts wailing on him and bombs and bombs, and McGregor, it's raining down on him, and he's dodging, and he's bobbing, and he's weaving, but he gets caught, right? You can only bob and weave so many. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Anderson Silva, right? Bob's one, weaves second, but then he gets caught with the third one. And then weaves again, blocks another one, and then he gets caught with the sixth one. And I remember thinking to myself, like, move away, move away. Like, do one of your elusive movements, use your footwork, get out of there. But then you think back to the leg, and then you go, oh my God, you can't move. You, you, you can barely put pressure on that leg. What they would call it is, they, they even called it a dead leg, and I gotta do some more research to know what that means, but from our common sense from one person to another, it means that that leg is um, out of commission. You're not gonna use that leg anymore. You're not gonna kick, you know, you can barely walk on it. That's why it was so hard for him to, to get away from the, the, the cage. And Dust just starts wailing on him, and then you see the shot that takes McGregor down, and then there's this one scene, man, where McGregor's down, and, and he has like his upper back and his head just leaning back against the octagon cage, and, and Dustin comes with one more right, pop! And I believe Conor McGregor goes out. He, so it, there was a mistake, it said TKO, but I believe from what I saw, it was actually a KO. Daniel, are you saying you saw it better than the refs and the like, commissioners and the officials? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Now, <laughs> I'm serious, he goes out for a second or two, Refs, everyone comes around him. Dustin Poirier's up, he's celebrating. Everyone's like, holy Christ, the kid did it. He just beat Conor McGregor. And, um, you know, eventually, you know, Conor wakes back up. They bring him up to his feet. And you can see him, man. He looks terrible. He's, he's basically limping, you know. He comes over. They, they talk to Dustin. They're all good. Handshakes all around. And that ends UFC 257. I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. I hope you enjoyed my little takeaways from it. Thank you very much for listening. If you're watching this on YouTube, I thank you so much for the likes, subscribe, all that good stuff. I appreciate it. I appreciate your support. If you're listening to this on Apple iTunes and Spotify, thank you very much. I wish you an amazing day and take care of yourselves, my friends. Bye-bye.